There is a lot of confusion about managed hosting and self-hosting for Ghost. And in this video, I'm going to explain what they are, their similarities and differences. In short, the trade-off is between time and money. So if you don't have time to invest, you should pick managed hosting because it's easier to set up. But if money is a concern, you should go for self-hosting because it's a bit cheaper. Hi, my name is Tiago and I talk about technology for blogs and newsletters. Let's dive into it. Because Ghost is open source like WordPress, you can decide between self and managed hosting. Self-hosting is when you install the software in a server of your choice. In this case, you will be responsible for everything, including installation, making updates, backups, and taking care of the security. On the other hand, managed hosting is when you pay a company to take care of everything, so you don't have to touch code or worry with anything. Also, an important distinction to make is that Ghost Pro is only one of the several managed hosts for Ghost. You can watch the video Best Managed Hosting for Ghost in this channel on the link on the description. Now that we have established what is self-hosting and managed hosting, it's time to talk about what they have in common. The most important thing to remember is that Ghost CMS is the same software, doesn't matter the host. So there is not an official Ghost and a Ghost for self-hosting. What exists is the same Ghost CMS that is open sourced and used by everyone. So there are no differences in features when picking a host and the dashboard, writing posts, teams, etc. Everything is the same when using Ghost on a day to day. What exists are different iterations of Ghost as the software gets updated over time. The, at the time of recording, the current version of Ghost is 4.39. Now that you understand there is only one Ghost CMS, it's time to talk about the differences when picking self-hosting and managed hosting. There is a world of difference between them, and as I told before, the trade-off is between time and money. The first item on the list is the installation process. For managed hosting, this process is easy. You pick an host, create an account, pay their price, and they install Ghost for you. For self-hosting, this can be trivial or an adventure depending on your tech skills. First, you need to pick a server with the minimum requires to run Ghost, and then you need to install it via the command line. If you don't know what the command line is, I recommend you to avoid this process or be prepared to invest a lot of time to learn more about it. There are a lot of videos telling you how to self-host Ghost on a step-by-step, -step, and I'll leave those links in the description for you to check them out. The next difference is setting up newsletters. To send newsletters, you must connect Mailgun and Ghost. Mailgun is a bulk mail provider and they will be responsible for sending the newsletter from Ghost to the inbox of the subscriber. Additionally, you will have to pay for Mailgun to send in emails. Fortunately, Mailgun emails are very cheap. Ghost Pro is the only managed hosting that already comes connected with Mailgun, so it's one less thing for you to do. And with every other managed hosting and self-hosting option, you have to connect it manually or you won't be able to send newsletters. From my experience, connecting Mailgun and Ghost is a bit hit and miss and the tutorials are confusing. So leave a comment below if you want me to make a video about it. Next on the list are updates. Again, you are paying for this to be automatic with managed hosting. This doesn't mean the process runs alone. Automatic means someone is doing it for you. Actually, you will only notice updates when there is something new in the dashboard or if you follow Ghost on social media to discover an announcement. Self-hosting is the opposite. Everything depends on you. You must open the terminal and run the commands to update your site. But first, do a backup. Always do a backup before doing any update. As a side note, in September I had a conversation with Eleanor Koenig from the Obsidian Roundup newsletter about her experience with self-hosting. She said updates took around 1 minute per month but needed to be ready for anything to go wrong at any time. But Eleanor ran into problems a month later and informed us that she was migrating to Ghost Pro because the hassle wasn't worth saving a couple of bucks. I must tell you that not everybody runs into these type of problems and a lot of people run self-hosting without any major issue. I recommend you to visit the forums to know the type of problems that people face when they self-host. When it comes to privacy, some users are concerned with the risk of bans. This is even more common when talking about managed hosting. But I like to remember you that Ghost CMS don't have content guidelines. And the existing guidelines are imposed by payment services and web hosting companies. So for those people, I will tell you that if a managed host ban you, in 99% of the cases, self-hosting will also result in a ban. 
you can make an online search to know the types of content that will lead to those scenarios. And since we are at it, let's also talk about security. Cyber attacks happen all the time, but companies hosting Go CMS have produced fewer incidents than with other CMSs. At the recording time, there was only one major incident of a vulnerability happening with Ghost Pro. Again, if this happens with managed hosting, this is not your worry or concern because it is outsourced to the company. So I will also not worry about picking one managed hosting company over the other because of security. However, if you decide to self-host, everything is on your hands, including the site's uptime. I'm not a security expert and this is a topic that will deserve its own video. What I can tell you is that you should search how to keep a VPS secure if you go to self-host. Next, I'll talk about maintenance and the first item on the list are backups. As you might expect, with managed hosting, they make regular backups of your site and self-hosting people need to do it manually. There are several ways to make a backup on Ghost with user 1 going to the dashboard and exporting the content from the site. Another task when self-hosting is managing the disk space. Over time, as you upload more images, the disk can become full. If that's the case, you can go back and delete some images or upgrade to get more disk space. If the disk gets full in the managed hosting scenario, the company will ask you to upgrade to a higher paid plan. And at last, there are CDNs. They are useful because they preload the content of a site on different servers around the globe. This will make the site load faster compared to downloading from the central server where your site is hosted. And almost all managed hostings include CDNs. So there is no need for you to pay for one or install it yourself. In the self-hosting case, that's different. You need to connect one to your site, and if you pick one that's not free, you need to pay for that extra. Also, self-hosting plans tend to have data bandwidth limits. So if a site gets lots of visitors, this limit can be hit. And if that happens, you need to upgrade for a more expensive plan. But a CDN is a solution for that because they reduce data bandwidth consumption. So it makes sense to use a CDN, and it might make sense to pick one that is paid for you. To conclude the differences, it's important to mention modifications. With modifications, I'm talking about changing things that Ghost doesn't do by default. And these types of modifications are only possible if you self-host. Essentially, these are changes to the core of Ghost. But this isn't recommended because every time there is an update, it will overwrite them. This means you will have to go back and make the changes again or stay on the older version of Ghost which is not recommended for security reasons. Ghost allows you to do a lot of stuff with integration and that is the route you should consider to customize Ghost. As you just watched, there are no differences when using Ghost in a day-to-day -day if you decide to self-host or not. The differences comes with things on the background like connecting to Mailgun, making backups, updates and keeping the site safe. Here, the trade-off is clear. If you decide to self-host, you will be responsible for everything. This means you will rely on your coding skills and the Ghost community to help you. But I will tell you that not all posts on forums get answers, and you need to be aware of that. On the other side, managed hosting does all the heavy lifting, and that's why I love it. And in terms of money, there is not a big difference between them. Self-hosting on DigitalOcean starts at $5 and that's the most popular option, and managed hosting starts at $9 per month on Ghost Pro. If you watch my video about the best managed hosting for Ghost, you will find a company that has free managed hosting. Another reason I prefer managed hosting is that I can fix my problems with an email. I will tell you a story. Recently, my site was down on a Friday afternoon. I emailed Midnight Hosting customer support saying my site was down. And a couple of hours later, they replied back saying the site was fixed. This peace of mind cost me $15 per month and is totally worth it because I am not a developer. However, this video wasn't made to convince you to use managed hosting, I'm just telling you that I love it. This is an important disclaimer because I am an affiliate for some companies mentioned in this video. I'll finish the video telling you that I decided to use Ghost CMS because of its unique features and to make my life easier as a blogger, not to learn web development. Hope to have helped you understand Ghost CMS better. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And please subscribe to the channel. This is the Stack Junction YouTube channel and thanks for watching until the end.